certain ways to solve the problems around uh, hybrid teams communicating with each other are uh, using conference rooms by people who are sitting in the same office. So by using conference room, I mean that whenever they want to discuss, they can actually walk into a conference room, set up a call with the rest of the team members, and they can communicate uh, as a group with the person on the other side. The, and when I say this, I strictly mean that don't use your laptops. Each individual sitting in the same conference room using their laptops to speak is going to create a lot of noise. So either you sit at your desk and everyone uh, join in the call, or if you want a whiteboard to be present uh, and somebody wants to write on it, then use a conference room as a central point for originating the uh, communication and have somebody remotely join in. Now, this is a variable uh, kind of a solution, but point is that as many people who, are, who can physically uh, come together for brainstorming will be beneficial. Because as I mentioned that osmosis is imminent and to a certain extent, it is a tool of productivity as well. You cannot completely ignore it. So there is always a possibility that you should be using conference rooms at a given point in the discussion, especially during early design discussions or planning sessions. So this is not applicable only to engineers, but anyone uh, working on a brainstorming in the industry needs to realize the uh, impact of using conference rooms at the right moments. Every meeting doesn't require everyone to just walk to a conference room, then get seated and you have a discussion. But the ones which can benefit from people talking to each other, looking at each other, brainstorming, not staring into the stream, uh, their screens is definitely going to help. And a conference room also gives an opportunity for people uh, to be taken away from their phones. So uh, at least if you have 10 people uh, watching uh, your actions, there is going to be at least some kind of uh, consideration that you turn away from a phone and don't keep staring at your notifications. So conference rooms are something which are available only in the office locations and you need to use them judiciously. If you are working in a co-working space, then you might have to book them. So even in bigger offices, booking is a better way of dealing with the uh, uh, conference room availability. So it also makes you plan things. So conference rooms are much better than water cooler discussions. So that's the uh, point that uh, try to make it more formal and inclusive by having people walk into conference rooms instead of just going on a coffee break and discussing our things. Use the hot seating facility if your office provides it. Uh, it is becoming more and more uh, regular for offices to provide this kind of a hot seating booking system where you can book in advance and try to get a seat. But there is a downside to this as well because there are certain days when people are uh, uh, the people outnumber the seats. So there is a possibility that you might miss out on uh, that particular day. So in that case, you can visit the office only for a couple of hours and uh, ensure that you are part of the meeting and then you can come back. So this might sound like a hassle, but then that's the call you need to make. That if you are unable to get a seat, what is the contingency plan? Can it be done offline? If it cannot be done offline, then you are forcing the meeting to be rescheduled. So what is the contingency plan as a team? Because there is no right answer. It depends on who is uh, facing that problem. If only a junior listener engineer who cannot benefit, uh, I mean, who is not going to present anything, but is only going to benefit by being in the room, misses out on this kind of an opportunity, the meeting is not going to be moved. Trust me, it won't be. And uh, you, if you are that, a particular junior engineer, the call is yours. Do you want to take that risk? So hot seating is a bottleneck. Remember that it is always going to hamper how uh, the office facilities can be used for employees who are showing up for the uh, hybrid mode work. So your team allocation, this needs to be clarified by the managers and very clearly communicated to the employees 
because uh, not every place has enough hot seating. This is more like a trial and error kind of a thing. People will try to cut costs on having uh, the office seats availability. Because I have worked in two setups which uh, were uh, which went from a fully operational facility to a hybrid mode in the past two years. They gave away around 60% of the office floor space. So the hot seating and all those things, they are still being figured out in those organizations. So this will be a variable that is going to affect your productivity. That's why I'm bringing it up that it is a factor uh, that affects your team productivity. So logistics is going to define how well you need to plan your meetings. And the duration of meetings is also critical because you cannot book conference room for hours at length. If in a hot seating scenario, that might no longer be possible. So setting up calendars and statuses sincerely becomes critical. So that if you are going to be in a meeting, your calendar has to be marked so that no one can mistakenly add you as available during that meeting. So the meeting planning has to be very precise. You have to communicate the agenda to everyone. You have to set the expectations right so that uh, people are aware that if they need to see a screen share, then they cannot attend that meeting from their mobile because then uh, it becomes highly non-productive to have the font size increased and beyond a point if you are doing a code review or something like that, it's not even possible. So I have been in certain meetings where people have chosen to attend a meeting on their mobile phone and we have wasted half of the meeting just trying to uh, have the thing set up correctly uh, for the person on the mobile phone to see things properly. And this is again a hierarchy based issue. Uh, if somebody senior on the team requests makes that kind of a request as a junior you really can't do much. So. Uh, First of all, if you are in a senior enough position, don't let this happen. And if you are in a junior position and if you are seeing these kind of problems happening, convey them to your engineering manager that uh, it is becoming a bit troublesome. So even as a presenter, if you are presenting from home, then it brings in a different set of challenges. We will talk about the home office in the upcoming uh, section. But you need to realize that the logistics and infrastructure is a critical part of productivity, which uh, you cannot ignore. I mean, it is uh, something that is overlooked most of the times. No policies uh, actually mention this explicitly. In one of the organizations where I was working, the moment uh, the pandemic hit, they actually started a one-time uh, payment for setting up home offices, which was very kind of them. And it was very beneficial as well. They were generous in providing the amount for that one time transaction. Uh, but again, not everyone has uh, the right kind of uh, ecosystem to set up a home office, which we will talk about soon. But the point coming back to the original point of planning meetings, planning meetings doesn't mean setting up the meeting only on the calendar. You have to set up the reminder, you have to set up the agenda, you have to inform all the decision makers involved about their impending attention. So meeting planning becomes a far more critical activity and this unfortunately falls only on the managers or the person setting the meeting. So as an attendee, try to make life of your teammates easier by uh, setting, uh, keeping your calendars up to date and uh, setting things correctly. So one of the things that tends to happen is everyone in a hybrid mode uh, has a different lunch time. So people in office will eat at some particular time, let's say 12.30 in the afternoon, and somebody at home decides to have lunch at two o'clock. So uh, now there is a mismatch. You cannot set up a meeting at 1.30 anymore. So this communication has to be done upfront. So the best thing is that uh, you set up core working hours, that generally the availability of the team in office will be uh, 11, 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock and in the evening 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock or whatever is convenient. The team needs to discuss these things, set it up and stick to it. And when I say stick to it, it doesn't mean that it is writing on the wall, exceptions happen. 
you cannot design for exceptions, but you should have a baseline rule at least, right? So that not everyone is working on a different time because productivity and communication are core to software engineering. In this case, we are talking about software engineering, but in general to business, these things matter. So irrespective of what business you are in, you need to realize the importance of planning the meetings correctly. And it takes a little while for it to sink in because it is like a habit that you are trying to build and you are trying to change the user behavior. And as we all know, in, on most of the occasions, it doesn't end well. And uh, people do get flustered because you are expecting them to change. But that's where you have to shine as a leader. Irrespective of your role, you, have, you can shine as a leader and convince people that this is killing our careers. So let's start focusing and getting things done in a better manner so that we all can enjoy the benefits of hybrid at the same productivity. The biggest time sink and the reason for people opting for hybrid is going to be commute because commute wastes a time uh, which is actually a, a huge detriment to productivity irrespective of which part of the world you are. Any commute longer than 20 minutes is going to leave you exhausted. And by exhausted, I don't mean that you won't be able to work, but it is a mental stress that you carry. Because uh, at least in the third world countries, like uh, in my case, when I was traveling more than two hours every day on a two-wheeler, the amount of anxiety it built, the amount of physical fatigue that it built was definitely a huge bottleneck in my productivity. So eventually after doing it, uh, at one point of time, my daily commute was like three hours. Uh, so around one hour, 15 minutes in the morning and the remaining time in the evening, because in the evening I couldn't escape the rush hours. So uh, commute is going to be a huge problem. Again, in India, it is common that people uh, rely on the office commute uh, mechanisms like if office are running buses as buses on particular times then they would rather use those facilities because it saves cost one thing the second thing is a lot of people don't drive so like in India if you consider then there are a lot of uh, ladies who refrain from driving and there is nothing wrong in it it is a fact they don't uh, drive they didn't learn to drive and now the traffics have traffic volumes have increased to such an extent that it is not even advisable to drive. So uh, learning to drive in those kind of situations is no longer possible and everyone cannot afford a car. And even if they can afford a car, the amount of traffic jams we see in cities, uh, they just cannot get past them. So the one of the primary reasons I was using a two wheeler was because I could navigate through traffic much better. A car gets stuck in a lane the bike can change lanes easily. At traffic signals, you can push your vehicle past other vehicles. So these are like a third world problems or the last mile problems. But you do realize that over 70% of the industry works in, the seven, uh, in these kind of conditions. The number of programmers in third world countries is much higher than first world countries. And even in cities like uh, where there is a significant residential density, or even office density. So in a city like New York, you can see that no one drives a car to office, everyone takes a subway. So the times of subways are fixed. You cannot change them. So, so commute is a huge factor in your um, team planning. And now with hybrid, it's going to multiply many fold because everyone is going to decide their commute times differently. So your core working hours become mandatory. So if you don't have a core working hours decided, then every other day you will end up asking everyone before setting a meeting, where are you going to be when this meeting happens? And that is extremely counterproductive. So factor in commute aggressively in your planning. And it some people might feel a little uh, taken aback if, uh, being asked every time that uh, at what time you are going to show up, convince them that it is actually a time sink for the entire team. So if you are setting up a meeting at 10.30, then everyone who wants to be in office should be in office by 10.15. They cannot rush into the meeting room directly from the parking because they are not going to be focused. So the whole point about the meeting is people being focused and solving problems. 
if they if they just show up physically then it's of no value so hybrid is uh, can actually become a bit of a hassle when it comes to factoring in commute on behalf of a team and trust me think about commute as the biggest time sink uh, people ignore this because it happens outside the premises of the organization but it is the biggest time sink biggest source of anxiety and biggest reason for uh, flaky thinking and uh, bugs so do not ignore this at all